So to fix all of these problems that we've been having, we can use Selenium WebDriver's WebDriver Weight class. And if we take a look at the WebDriver Weight class, it's actually very simple. What it does is allows us to define an object that is going to wait for elements to appear. So there are two constructors. There's this WebDriver constructor where you pass in your driver and then you pass in the time span to wait a maximum period for an element to appear, right? This is just like we've been doing with the implicit weights where you say, okay, I'm going to wait a maximum. This is a maximum amount. It doesn't mean that it's actually going to wait for that amount. The other constructor that we have is you can pass in a clock. Uh, you can pass in a driver. You can pass in a time span again, the maximum amount that you want your code to wait for. And then you can pass in a sleep interval. And if we take a look at the sleep interval, defines how often to check for a condition to be true. So this kind of allows you to set the polling interval of the web driver weight class. So the default polling interval of the web driver weight class is 500 milliseconds. So if you don't want to be polling so frequently, or maybe you want to be polling more frequently, you can change that using this class. So let's take a look at its usage. Uh, that's over here in this explicit weight two uh, test. And you can see that what I did is I created a new instance of a web driver weight class. I started my stopwatch and now I'm going to search for an element. And I'm going to search for an element by using the wait dot until method. And the wait dot until method allows me to poll for an element until it appears. Right the until if we hover over it, you can see that it returns a web element. And if you read the text, you can see that it uh, repeatedly applies the instance's input value to the given function until one of the following occurs. The function returns neither null nor false. The function throws an exception that is in the list of ignored exception types. The timeout expires. So it's going to keep doing something until the element is not found basically, and then it's going to throw an exception. And so this is awesome because as you saw, it only waits for the maximum amount of time required for an element to appear on the page. Therefore, that was only five seconds. If we needed to do it for 10 seconds, because the environment was slower, it would do it for 10 seconds, right? So it doesn't matter if your test is running slower that day, it would wait for a maximum of 10 seconds. The only caveat here is you obviously have to find the right amount of time to wait for an element to appear. Usually it depends on your application, but on some of my applications, I'll usually set this to like 30 seconds. And I should expect that an element, right, should be rendered on a page within 30 seconds. If it's not, to me, that's pretty absurd that a page is not getting loaded within 30 seconds. And so then I'll fail it if it's slower applications. If it's some of the faster applications, I might just set it to 10 and keep that constant for all of my elements so that I should be expecting that our web pages are loading within 10 seconds. Let's do a quick run just so you guys can see what this code right here does. And this is my explicit weight that I define myself. I'm gonna do a debug and it's gonna run until here and then stop at a breakpoint, And then I'm quickly going to step into it so that you guys can see what happens. So we're going to step into it. And so now it's going to do this method, right? Defined element method. And if it's there, it's going to return that element into here. So if I do that, step through, my dynamic element, you can see that now it exists. Here's its text, hello world. And then of course the stopwatch gets stopped and then the trace gets written. And so we have our explicit weight. However, 
you can see that this is a little bit cumbersome, right? It's probably a little bit annoying to keep writing this out every time you need to wait for an element, right? This is, it's not a lot of code, but to be writing, you know, these three lines of code for every time you want to wait for an element, it could get kind of cumbersome. So Selenium does an amazing thing and they define a convenience method for us to use. Let's go check that out.